Hi, boys and girls. We are starting a new section of American Heritage. Um, we are in Unit 3. We've moved to the whole last section. It's the modernization of America. So we get to learn about some more inventors and things in the next coming chapters, which is really fun because we have a science crossover. Um, and you can do some science experiments as part of your activities. So I'm going to read page 284. Abigail's, we're going to switch off taking turns. I'm going to popcorn Abigail. And then I'll pause and ask some questions. So here we go. Read along with us. Don't just watch the video. I want you to actually read along, follow with your finger. Um, any of the bold words or the italicized words, make sure we stop on those and pay attention. All right, here we go. Uh, the end of the Civil War meant a new beginning for the United States of America. The new beginning came with its own set of challenges, but determined men and women move forward to continue building America. While some of the South struggled to accept a new way of life, remember they just got rid of slavery, Others took great leaps towards making our country better. Settlers like Laura Ingalls Wilder, boys and girls, we read her book. Do you remember what it was called? Little House in the Big Woods. Okay. Um, settlers like Laura Ingalls Wilder and her family continued expanding west to an area that would become a great food producer for this country. Alexander Graham Bell's and Thomas Edison's marvels of invention opened doors to the modern world. Kevin, I bet you're already telling me what those are. Um, African-American educators, Booker T. Washington and George Washington Carver, inspired their students to reach for the stars. I love those chapters, by the way. Presidents, pilots, preachers, athletes, and adventurers showed Americans that there is no limit to what hard work and dedication would accomplish. In fewer than 50 years, Americans witnessed the Wright brothers' first famous airplane flight. Uh, Abigail, finish the sentence. You keep going. Man's first journey into space. Matthew, that's your chapter. You're going to love that. And the next decade, even the man's first man's first steps on the moon. Popcorn Abigail. Jim Elliott went to the jungles of South America, offering freedom in Christ for everyone who believed. Martin Luther King Jr. called for equality for all people. Ronald Reagan challenged the communist leader to tear down the wall that divided the city of Berlin, Germany. These and many other heroes stood up, took a chance, and changed the world. They came from ordinary homes and ordinary schools in ordinary towns. But their determination to do something that mattered was extraordinary. These are the history making makers who took America from a people weary of war, the thriving nation we live in today. Hey, Abigail, did you know that Daddy and I went to um, the Ronald Reagan Museum in California That's and cool. saw a piece of the Berlin Wall? That's cool. Like an actual chunk of the Berlin Wall. It's amazing. Okay, so let's look at the Cost timeline. Longer. Let's look at the timeline down there. Um, and It's the modernization of America. So we are done with the Civil War. It's after the Civil War. During this time, World War I and World War II will happen. Um, and we'll get to see what happens during this timeline. So flip the page. That was just an intro. Our first lovely lady that we get to learn about is Emily Roebling. Abigail, do you know what she did? Nope. Great. We'll find out. Uh, what? Tell us when she lived, Abigail. She lived from 1843 and died in 1903. Okay, so kids in our class love to know how old she is. Could you do the math and tell me how old she is in your head? Let's see. How old she is now, but she's dead. No, how old she was then. So 43 to 100 is what? 60. 43, 19, or 1843. Oh, wow. well, I was doing it. She lived 60 years. Oh, yeah. She lived 60 years. Abigail already did the math. She lived 60 years. So uh, 43 to 100 is 57 plus 3 more is 60. So she lived to be 60 years old. She's not very old. No. Um, so Emily Roebling, 1843 to 1860. Did she live during the Civil War? Yes. Could she have met President Lincoln? Yes. She could have. Um, let's see if she did. A curious girl. So this looks at her childhood. Do you want to read it or do you want me to? You can. Okay, great. Uh, so we're on page 286. Don't just listen. Follow along. A curious girl. Here, put the piece in like this, Emily's sister said as she tried to help her with the puzzle. I can put it together by myself, Emily insisted. Her older brothers and sisters soon realized that she was a smart girl who liked to figure things out by herself. Emily Warren Roeblings. Okay, we say that together because it's in bold. Are you ready? Emily Warren Roebling had 11 brothers and sisters. Can you imagine? She and her older brother, oh goodness, I can't even say his name. Gouverneur. Governor. I don't know, Governor. <laughs> sure. We're very close. Um, 
Emily enjoyed learning. Uh, sorry, Emily enjoyed learning and was curious about many things. As a teenager, she still wanted to learn more. Governor, Governor. I'll just say that, um, paid for her to go to a special girls' school. So what did her brother do to help her? Um, he paid for a school like college. Uh, I, I think it was a younger grade school, so they just had I know, but like school. it was like it was I like their yeah, high school. Their their schooling. Um, where she studied subjects in science, history, geography, and French. We love French. Emily also took classes in horseback riding. Who does that remind you of? In my class. Horses. Not Presley, that's for sure. <laughs> sure, not Presley. Emily meets her husband, Popcorn Abigail. During the Civil War, Gubna was <laughs> an officer in the Union Army. When Emily went to visit him, he introduced her to a young officer. Emily, I would like you to meet Washington Roebling. Washington, this is my sister, Emily Warren. Emily and Washington liked each other right away. They became best friends during Emily's visit. He watched as she comforted the injured soldiers, wrote letters for them, and helped in other ways. When Emily returned home, she, w she and Washington began to write letters and vi visit each other when they could. In about a year, near the end of the Civil War, they got married. Ooh! So what war did Emily Roebling's, Emily Roebling's husband fight in? The Civil War. Yes. And did he fight for the North or the South? Let's see. Where is it on the page? I thought it did. No, it didn't. Oh, Union Army. Yep, there's the answer. So, and the Union Army is the North. You found it. So, um, okay, Abigail. And it's I'm in, in the North. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to say a definition. You tell me what word it is. Are you ready? Okay. Um, look at the word box. Follow along. See if you can beat Abigail to the answer. Are you ready? Game on. They're going to challenge you. A skilled laborer who agrees to complete a job for pay. Go. Contractor. Yes, it's a contractor. All right. I beat you all. Probably. All right. Uh, who is the woman who helped her husband supervise the building of the Brooklyn Bridge? Emily. Go. Emily Roblin. Yes. All right. Um, Kevin's probably saying the answers before I even finish, just so you know. Yeah. A person who designs and builds structures. Go. No. A person who designs and builds structures. Oh, I thought we did that one. Engineer. Sorry. You probably beat up again. Yeah, I just did that one. Don't shake the thing. Um, okay, so what was the name of the bridge across the East River that connects Brooklyn to Manhattan? Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, sorry, to Manhattan, New York. Brooklyn Bridge. Yes. Excellent. We're going to learn about that later. Builder of Bridges. Next page, 288. Washington Roebling's father, John Roebling, had been hired to build the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge. Bridge over the East River in New York. The bridge would connect the two cities, and Brooklyn and Manhattan. Building the bridge would be one of the largest building projects in American history. So what two cities did it connect? Brooklyn and Manhattan. Um, well... John Roebling worked on the design of the bridge. Emily and Washington Roebling traveled to Europe to give Washington the opportunity to study the bridges there. He wanted to learn all he could about their construction and about a sick and about a sickness that was common with bridge builders. After construction of the bridge began, John Roebling died from an accident on the bridge. So that was um, not... Her husband, that was her husband's dad. Okay, so John Sorry. Roebling died from the, an accident on the bridge. Washington took over the construction as the chief engineer, engineer of the Brooklyn Bridge project. So, Emily Roebling marries uh, Washington Roebling. Washington's dad is named John. Je his dad's working on the bridge but dies. So, who takes over? Emily's husband, Washington. Okay, Abigail, your turn. A determined wife. The illness that Washington Roebling studied in Europe was called de decompression sickness. Sadly, he became ill with the same sickness while working on a tunnel under the water. Because it was hard for him to walk, he had to stay in bed most of the time. He could not leave his home to supervise the workers, but Emily Roebling was determined to help her husband stay in charge. Washington Roebling could see that the bridge, a bridge through the telescope, he used in his house. He told his wife what needed to be done 
And she then told the workers... Okay, so pause right there. So um, decompression, uh, decompression sickness, so it can happen. I, I don't know if you know anybody who's a scuba diver. But when you go under the water, we learned about air pressure and water pressure a little bit in science. So when you are underneath the water, so in these structures, they had to go way down deep to do the footings of the bridge. Now, underneath the water, there's a lot, uh, the, the, the pressure is much different. So your body adjusts to the pressure. But if you come up too fast, uh, the, the decompression doesn't happen right. So these, these bridge builders who were going down, down deep um, and going in the different levels of pressure, uh, when that changed too fast, it actually made them sick and it could kill them. So That's divers scary. right now, and, and there are underwater welders and things like that, they actually are very careful about de, um, decompression and, and making sure they adjust to the pressure as they go so this doesn't happen to them. They don't get decompression sickness uh, and then they don't die. So amazing though. What I Can you picture in your mind, her husband is there like from his window with like a telescope watching the bridge and um, saying, oh, they need to do this and look at this. And he's he's watching all day and he comes and tells her what to do. Um, so that's what's happening. So he's sick. He's at home. She goes, tells the guys what they need to do. And he's there with his little telescope looking out the window um, watching their work. Okay. Emily? Emily Roebling also studied the different problems of the construction and learned the strength of the materials they were using. She studied how the cables of the bridge were made and how much weight and how much weight they you could can hold. Back to me. She learned new things each week about construction and engineering. Emily Roebling went to the bridge worksite every day. She gave her husband's instructions to the workers and answered their questions. Then she brought her husband daily updates from the workers. Mrs. Roebling kept very good records of all the work that was done. She answered mail and talked to each contractor, contractor before he was hired. So what was a contractor again, boys and girls? It's someone hired to do a job. So she's telling them all this information and going back and forth. And if you're telling people information, do you think you're going to start understanding it and learning what it means? Yes. So she was actually learning about the engineering stuff that her husband was telling. That's careful. Her husband was telling the, um, the contractors and the people working on the bridge. So she was learning as she was delivering information. Some people said that the Brooklyn Bridge would not be finished because of the high cost and delays in the work. She wanted to hire a new chief engineer. Sorry, they wanted to hire a new chief engineer. But Emily Roebling wrote down her husband's reasons for why he should not be replaced. Mrs. Roebling bravely spoke to the American Society of Civil Engineers. So remember, boys and girls, this was a day when women weren't valued the same in, in um different jobs in different fields like this. And so for her to speak in front of a group of engineers uh, was a big deal at the time. At that time in America's history, women did not give speeches in public, but Emily Roebling's ideas in the speech were accepted by the engineers. They realized that her knowledge of engineering was amazing. So she had learned enough from her husband to communicate this so well and to communicate what he was saying that they said, you know what? I think you guys can do this. All right, let him keep working. Emily Roebling continued to supervise the bridge construction for 14 years. That's how old my brother is. That's a good connection, Abigail. She faithfully, wow, that's a long time. <laughs> she faithfully reported to her husband in the progress and gave daily instructions to the workers. She attended meetings and was able to answer any questions she was asked about the building of the bridge. Success. I like this page because it's a two-part spread. Um, all right, and you can still see if you've been to New York. I wish I could ask. I wish I could say, raise your hand if you've been to New York. Um, I've been on the Brooklyn Bridge, and I've got to see this. This is fun. You can comment below always. No, no comments. No comments. <laughs> Never mind. But you can tell me during Zoom if you've been there. Yeah. Success on May twenty fourth, eighteen eighty three. The Bro Brooklyn, the Brooklyn <laughs> Bridge was finally complete. It was completed. <laughs> it was more than a mile long. The President of the United States, Chester A. Arthur, and the Governor of New York, Grover Cleveland, who became president Grover later, Cleveland resigned to Hawaii. Yeah. Which oh, wait, he became that's a president. Richardson. No, but Cleveland became a president later too. Oh, but Grover at, Cleveland vetoed more bills than most. Yes, but at that time he was just the governor. Keep yeah. going. 
Where at the ceremony to open the bridge, Emily Roebling was given the honor of being the first person to ride across the bridge. Okay, Abigail, I don't know if you know this, but the book gives us real big clues of important things they don't want the kids to forget. So see how that's in italics? Mm -hmm. So just a hint that might be on your quiz. Who was the first person who got to ride across the bridge? If they asked Abigail, and I give you multiple choice of who was the first person to ride across the bridge, um, and I said Grover Cleveland, Chester Arthur, uh, Emily Roebling, or Washington Roebling, what would you say? Grover Cle I mean, um, Emily Roebling. She was teasing. Emily Roebling. Yes, go ahead. Uh, she was praised for her part in making sure the bridge was built correctly. Oh, well, that'd kind of be scary, riding across a bridge and be like, <laughs> you and better. it just collapses. I know, good but thing. But it didn't. So. It didn't. Phew. Um, the opening day of the Brooklyn Bridge ended with a party at the Roebling's home. Kind of fun. It's like a little party parade. Um, Emily Roebling was glad that her husband could be part of this special celebration. After the Roebling, sorry, after the Brooklyn Bridge was completed, Emily Roebling designed a new family mansion and supervised its construction. Do you think she had good money after all that job? Probably. And she had the skills, too. She went to college, and at the age of 56, she received a law degree from New York University. So, boys and girls, she had spent her whole life learning and said, I want an official degree. I want to learn more. And so she went back to school and got her another law degree at the age of 56. 56. It is never too old to stop learning. Mrs. Roebling traveled and gave speeches and lectures for the rest of her life. She died at her home on February 28th, 1903. You want to finish that? In 16? No. Okay. <laughs> In 1964, the Brooklyn Bridge was named a National Historic Landmark. Today, tourists can take the pedestrian walkways. Do you know what a pedestrian is? Just people. A walker. <laughs> like someone who's like walking. I'm a pedestrian. So not cars is what they're saying. Um, take the pedestrian walkway across the bridge. On the Brooklyn side of the bridge, a plaque on the um, on the tower honors Emily Roebling and her important part in building the Brooklyn Bridge. So on the Brooklyn side, so if you're going from Brooklyn to Manhattan, which Manhattan is in New York, and you're crossing the Brooklyn Bridge, you uh -huh. can actually see this plaque right there. Can you read what it says? Like the her main um, husband died after her. That's interesting. Even though he had that. Yeah, even though he was sick. I wonder who took care of him after that. Good question. Um, Interesting. So the bridge builders of, sorry, the builders of the bridge dedicated this in memory of Emily Warren Roebling, 1843 to 1903. So do you think they put this plaque up while she was living? No, uh, because it has her death date on there. And it dedicates it to um, Washington Roebling and John Roebling. So all the people who worked on it, her dad, her father-in-law, her husband, and her uh, so if you go to New York in Brooklyn... Wait, her father-in-law lived longer than her? No, no. But he, his name is on there, too. He, he oh. died in 1869. Her father was named John. Her father-in-law. Oh, 19... Okay, never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I, was, I read it wrong. Got it. Um, when did Re Emily... O Ro <laughs> Emily Roebling... When did Emily Roebling... Wh sorry. What did Emily Roebling receive at the age of 56? Her degree uh, for her law degree. Yes. And how did she spend the rest of her life? Did she... Mickey, watch. How did she spend the rest of her life? Did she just hang out and go to Florida and sit on the beach? She just chilled out. No. What she did she just, really do? Uh, she traveled and gave speeches and lectures. Excellent. Because she was um, really smart. Okay. Modern Marvels. Do, do, do. Okay. This is what's fun, boys and girls. I want to tell you that on Google Classroom or on the, the list for this week's work, there's fun links. You could build paper bridges. Um, Matthew, I know you like extra science stuff, so if you have more materials, you could build really strong bridges. We actually watched a Lego, Lego Masters. Is that yeah, that was really cool. They, they had a competition who could build the strongest bridge out of Legos, and um, one of them held how many thousand? It was like over a thousand pounds. Or okay, a thousand, a thousand was the max, and two people held a thousand Yeah, out of Legos. And a they didn't even pounds. use the Technic bricks. No, not even the Technics. It was incredible. Um, and here is why. They used the things that they knew from science, um, the arches and uh, the angles and the different things that make the bridges strong. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Nice and loud. Bridges have been built throughout history. The first bridges were logs that naturally fell across the stream or rocks that rolled down a mountainside into a river. 
The first man-made bridges were probably made of wooden logs or stacked stones. A few simple bridges still stand today that were built before the time of Christ. Amazing. Wow. There are foot bridges, railroads, bridges, and four main types of modern bridges and vehicles travel across. The beam bridge is the most common and st simple type of bridge. It is made of piers or supports in the middle that hold it up. An arch bridge is named for the shape. Okay, you pause see really quick. Under the bridge. Um, can you point to the beam bridge on the next page? So it's just the simplest kind of bridge. Just like so it's like glass. Whoosh, straight across. And there is, if you go to Long Beach, Washington, there's a big section of the bridge that's up and over. This is pretty. Um, and then there's a part that goes straight across, and the seagulls, do you remember that part? And, like, the seagulls would fly, fly by no. the car? No. Yes, it's that long part that goes to Long I Beach, Washington. I don't remember that. We'll have to go again when everything opens up. So, if you go to Long Beach, Washington, from Astoria, there's a big part of the bridge, but then there's a part that goes straight across, and sometimes when it's foggy, you're like, where's the bridge? I don't see where it goes. Um, and that section is a beam bridge. So, ask your parents. And you know what? You can actually go take a drive right now. Um, when you're, you guys are locked up on a weekend, you're like, we have nothing to do. Let's just go drive and go see how many bridges we can find around town. We'll just keep our windows up and turn on some music. Um, that could be a project that you do. All right, Abigail, sorry, I interrupted. Keep going. Where was I? Beam bridge, then a pier bridge. Oh, I did the arch bridge. Um, oh yeah, I just interrupted. The arch bridge. Truss bridges have, not trust, truss bridges have straight beams that are often connected with a triangle shape. The suspension bridge is a strong enough to cross longer distances. These bridges use strong cables to hold up the bridge. Okay, now what kind of bridge was the Brooklyn Bridge? Do you know? Uh, the <laughs> the uh, the one that hang like the holds it suspension suspension bridge. The one I just said. Yes, yeah, suspension bridge. Okay. These She's bridges quizzing are me strong. now, boys okay. and girls. The the Roblings Brooklyn Bridge. You can quiz bridge. your mom and dad too. The Roebling's Brooklyn, Sorry, Brooklyn bridge, bridge is a suspension bridge held by cables. It's about 150 years old and still standing strong. And if you've ever gone over the um, Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, you've gone over a suspension bridge. Whoa. You okay. can actually drive through them from Portland and see if you can name all the bridge styles. That would be fun. Maybe we should do that. If we get bored suspension in the bridges in Portland? Let's go see. You know which one's a suspension bridge? You know the Tilikum bridge that we always ride our bike over by yes. Omzi? That's a suspension bridge. Yes. Okay. Different materials have been used throughout history to build bridges. Wooden bridges do not stand to test the time because wood can rot and decay. Makes sense. Bricks have also been used for bridges. However, bricks cannot hold the weight of a long distance. Steel, cement, and concrete are the most common building materials for today's bridges. Bridges must now be built with to withstand even the strongest earthquakes. True. The longest bridge in the United States is one from, is in the state of Louisiana. It's 23.9 miles long. That's almost a marathon, boys and girls. And crosses Lake Pontchartrain. Pa yeah, I would never cross Pontchartrain. That. The longest bridge in the world is in China. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Measuring 102 miles. 102 miles. Yes, and you can actually look that up. You can Google it. Um, longest bridge in China. I think the brownies are done. Do you want to go check on them? Hold on. It's okay. fine. I put them at the lowest thing. We're making gluten for new, brownies right now. They're really good. <laughs> As new bridges are built, engineers study earlier designs to see what they can improve, making them safer and longer lasting. Building a bridge can take years depending on the length and design of the bridge. The next time you cross a bridge, be thankful for the engineers who designed it and safe for you. Designed it to be safe for you and your family who travel on it many years. Excellent. So, um, awesome. Let's do the review questions. I'm going to go check on the brownie. Oh, okay. So Goodbye. <laughs> thanks for reading with us, Abigail. Um, so your optional field trip, family fun field trip, is going on a bridge hunt through Portland. So you can even take your book with you. Uh, see if you can identify the different types of bridges because there are lots there. Um, and they are different, actually. Okay, how did Governor, we're just going to say that's his name, and Abigail says, Governor, how did Governor Warren help his sister get an education? Hmm, find it if you don't know. What did he do? Did he teach her? Did he buy her books? Did he um, build a school for her? What did he do? 
I know you're waiting for me to answer, but I want you to think about it in your head. Don't just exercise and watch the exercise video. Do the work yourself. Here we go. He paid for her to attend school. Who knew that? Awesome. Okay, number two. Why did Emily and Washington Robley tra Robling travel to Europe? Why did they do that? Were they just going on a cruise for their anniversary? Were they going to get some yummy French pastries? What were they doing? If you don't know, look it, look it up. Pause the video and find the answer. Find it first and then unfreeze the video. Okay. They went, to study, they went to study the construction of the bridges in Europe and to study the sickness um, of the bridge builders. Does anyone remember what that sickness was called? Decompression sickness. Um, give yourself a pat on the back if you got that one. You can get a brownie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll give you a virtual brownie. Okay, name three ways Emily Roebling helped her husband build the Brooklyn Bridge. Abigail, you want to name a couple of those? What? Oh, she um delivered the message from him to his workers. Okay, That's excellent. And what's there's some more stuff with the workers, too. Like, in addition to that, what did she do? Uh, she, like, talked to them, and she, like, I don't know, and she... Gave stuff back to him. Right. She exchanged information back yes. and forth. So they, if they had questions or concerns, she would go and take the questions back to her husband. Um, and then while she was doing that, while she was doing that, Abigail, was she learning things? Yes. Yes. So she was studying and she was learning things too. So she can actually um, help improve the bridge. So she learned the strength of the materials. She studied how the cables um, of the bridge were being made and how much weight they could hold. Uh, she brought her husband updates, which we already said. And she kept very detailed records of what was done. Uh, she answered mail. And then she talked to each contractor um, before he was hired. Do you remember what a contractor was? Yes. Someone hired to do a job, a specific job. Okay. Uh, like in our house, we could hire a plumber. And what do they do? They help with the plumbing. We could hire an electrician. And what do they do? They help with anything My electrical. My dad works with a lot of contractors. Yes. Mr. Cornthal, working for D.R. Horton as a builder, uh, works with many different kinds of contractors. Mm. Okay. He doesn't do any of the building, but he works with the people who do. Oh, okay. What did the... Number four. What did the American Society of Civil Engineers realize when Mrs. Roebling spoke to them? Remember, she was a lady in a time oh. where a lot of ladies didn't speak like this. Can I answer this one? Yeah, but I miss you. I can't see you. <laughs> I just see BB-8 back there. What? Oh. Okay. Yeah, she realized that, um, they realized that, like, girls, like, basically, like, wow, she's actually really good. Um, <laughs> let's, um, let's, uh, let them get their job. Yes, in a nutshell, that's exactly right. <laughs> so they said she really knows what she's talking about. She's she knows her stuff. She's an educated. She knows her engineering. And we're going to let her husband keep his job and keep working on the, the bridge. Um, number five, what did Emily Roebling receive when she was 56 years old? We've gone this over to this a couple of times. But what did she receive? A lot. Not a puppy. A lot. Oh, a puppy would have been much better than a law degree. Maybe she got one too. But Probably that's not enough. What is it? I said a puppy would have been much better than a law degree. Oh, see, she worked that in there. It was a law degree from the University of New York. I knew that. Yeah, I'd probably have to look that one back up. What, number six, what can tourists see on the Brooklyn side of the bridge that honors Emily Roebling? It's metal. That's a hint. I think it's bronze. It's a type of thing that's like metal. It also, another word that you'd find, you'd find it on your teeth and get it scraped off at the dentist, but it, it, that's a different meaning. You want to say it together? Three, uh, two, one. Plaque! So sh there's a plaque um, on, the wash on the Brooklyn side of the Brooklyn Bridge dedicated to Emily Roebling, her husband, and her father-in-law for their incredible work on the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay, boys and girls, I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, make sure you're being... She got her tap shoes on. Make sure you're being diligent. Make sure you're being gracious to your parents. Make sure you're um, being careful when you answer your quiz because you're going to have a test on Friday. Do not uh, go so fast that you um, just make silly answers. So be careful. Show me what you know. Love you. Um, praying for you guys. Miss ya. <laughs>